for today's session. There we go. All right. Well, hey, welcome all new friends, old friends. Great seeing everybody. Welcome to Shymug. Uh, typical house rules to kick everything off safe space. So if we do talk about any use cases here, please don't share anything outside of this group. Um, also, please don't reach out to people without their permission. Um, this is not for, you know, scraping lists or anything like that. Um, this is all for us to grow and learn from each other and have a little bit of fun. Uh, officially, we are recording. Um, if you do not wish to be a part of the recording, feel free to drop and we'll send you a copy when everything's all said and done. Uh, but we'll also be sending this out to everyone. So if you do have questions and want to go back and rewatch anything that was covered in today's session, we're going to have that available too. Um, I'm going to try to get that up today, if not tomorrow. So you'll have that pretty quickly. Uh, if you're here, you probably registered already through the Shymug Bevy site, but if not, uh, mugs.marketo.com slash shymug. Uh, mugs.marketo.com is also where you can register for any of the other mug sessions around the world that are happening virtually. Um, so a few industry specific ones in there, uh, the North American VMUG, there's a wide variety, um, including ones that are specific to things like visible um, and broader combined experience uh, users groups. Summit's back, y'all. In person, March 19th through the 23rd in Vegas. Um, there is also going to be a virtual portion. So if travel is not yet in your budget yet or you're not comfortable being in person, that content will still be available. Um, so it is going to be structured as a hybrid environment. Uh, if you are going to be there in person, per usual, there's going to be a ton of great sessions, networking, events, concerts, food and drink, the full shebang. So keep an eye out for more information for that coming. Um, early bird registration is open at the moment. So you can usually get some pretty good discounts, especially if you're trying to get some budget stuff in before the end of the year. Um, Adobe sent over a cool little thing. They've got some letters that you can convince your boss with if you need them, um, but little stats for you. A uh, couple of upcoming things. Um, I mentioned that there are some additional users groups that focus on cross product. Um, so there is one that they have created called the Better Together chapter, focused on experience cloud. So if you are looking at some of the different other products, this is a great opportunity to learn from cross-functional um, users that are in different AEM products. Uh, looking to make an impact, um, Marketo Engage, looking for reviews on things like trust radius g2 um, little note these are key if you're looking to apply for the marketo champions program uh, that will likely open up in q1 uh, but one of the things they often look for is are you an adobe marketo advocate are you putting reviews out there um, and sharing your insights within the community so something to keep in mind if you're thinking about that and certification uh, there is a new certification that has launched, um, actually launched last week. Uh, I think it's 558, is the new number, 559, maybe, don't quote me on that. Um, but the new exam is in there live. Um, very exciting to have that in there. The expert recommended to have at least a year, preferably 18 months of hands-on experience before you go in and give that a shot. Uh, the master exam is the old MCSA, which is now open to everyone, not just consultants. Um, so a little bit in there to choose from. Now, I'm going to go ahead and kick things over to James Leadham, whom we are absolutely thrilled to have today. Um, James is actually formerly in-house at Marketo in marketing operations, the, uh, the individual who was making a lot of this stuff happen behind the scenes and after going to a few other companies is back uh, as of this week so he unfortunately has left us at the marketo champions program uh to go back to the purple red side of the house uh as an internal consultant for customers um and i'll let james explain a little bit more about that but james thank you for being here very excited to have you thanks for having me I appreciate it. All right, I will um, 
Let me share my screen here, uh, kind of kick things off, give everyone a little intro on me. Um, and yeah, I'm a pretty uh, kind of operate fairly casually. Uh, can we see uh, ye old purple? I gotcha. Okay, great. Uh, well, hey everyone, how's it going? I'm uh, I'm James. I am based out in um, in Denver, Colorado. Uh, as you saw on the landing page, uh, it's it's just me and my dog out here. Uh, so that's my coworker, uh, Foley. Um, and yeah, I've just uh, I've I've been bouncing around from a few different companies. One was doing Marketo at Marketo, visible at Marketo. Uh, doing Marketo before that. And then um, left uh, about a year and a half ago to go um, work with just some other companies and kind of build out a little bit more at smaller companies, the, the uh, autonomy of being able to bring in different technologies and kind of like own a whole tech stack. Um, and then I just started, uh, this is weird, I'm putting this presentation together between jobs. And so I didn't have access to either Salesforce or Marketo. So I just had to like scrounge through my old screenshots and everything uh which is super fun um but uh yeah just started back at um at adobe as a customer technical advisor so essentially the role sits between uh support and um and csms and the consulting services for adobe where support's very technical but maybe not with the best practice knowledge and uh, consulting has best practice, but they're very expensive. Uh, so I essentially am acting as a free service um, to any Marketo customers that might be running into snags, or maybe they're um, implementing their Marketo instance and want to know what the best practices are kind of going from there. So uh, yeah, internal consulting, uh, you all have my my permission to, to reach out to me on LinkedIn. If you'd like, you can also get to me through CSM um, if you want to go the official route. But uh, yeah, reach out, connect. Um, I love spread, spreading the good word about, about Marketo. Um, so today uh, we're going to talk about an add-on uh, for Marketo that's uh, Marketo Sales Insight. If you don't have it, that's totally fine. Maybe this will kind of give you a, a preview. Uh, not selling at all. If you're interested in it, then talk to your CSM. I'm not the guy to to give you quotes on anything. Um, but if you are using it, maybe uh, you get a couple tips and tricks in here to um, improve your instance and how you're utilizing it. Uh, so that's ideal. So let's look into maximum visibility here. Um, so here's our agenda we'll go through. Essentially, what is MSI? Um, how's it used? What are the best use cases? Uh, and then how we can set it up in Marketo to do basically what we want it to do and be scalable and kind of have more of that like set and forget mentality as you set up a, a program end to end in Marketo. Um, you never really want to forget the things that you set up. It's always good quarterly or uh, yearly to go back and, and look at the uh, look at the information that you're stamping on fields and stuff like that. Um, so this is uh, this is kind of one of those one of those programs, hopefully. Um, and then some words to the wise, you know, everything, as we know, with Marketo, there's a th there's a million ways to do something in Marketo. There's a thousand ways to do it right. And there's 10 ways to uh, to do it where it's scalable and it's the best practice. So uh, we'll go through some of those as well. Just kind of things to to uh, keep and keep an eye on. Uh, and then we'll leave some time for q and I would love to answer questions on this. Um, so what is MSI? This is uh, kind of the uh, there we go. Um, this is what you'll see on the Adobe website. Uh, I'm not going to read this off to you. I know we all know how to read. Uh, and it's uh, it's pretty easy to find on the website. But essentially, it's a an iframe that goes in, in your CRM. Uh, in my experience, I've used it with Salesforce. So I'm going to refer to Salesforce today. But it does work with Microsoft Dynamics. A couple small changes between Salesforce and Dynamics um, within this iframe. But in general, um, uh, it's, it's pretty similar across the board. Um, so essentially it's enabling sellers to really see what's going on in marketing and, um, it'll pull in, uh, custom milestones that you might have in your system where you have, uh, someone registered for a webinar, or it can pull in your website information where people are scoring. Uh, and then it also has some really cool operational features as well. So I'm excited to show you some of those. I'm definitely like an operational guy. I've never had, I've, I've only worked in marketing ops essentially. So the whole marketing side of it is like 
that's great. I love enabling that. But when you get into like the the little nitty gritty technical pieces, um, that's that's where I I am happiest for sure. So um, yeah, essentially sales intelligence on the go. Um, you can look at it on uh, lead contact account and opportunity objects just to see based on an object in Salesforce in this instance, um, what people are engaging with. So, so let's go through um, a little bit more of like what marketing sees. So on the left, this is what we see, right? We're all kind of familiar with this. Um, you know, it's, it's not the Tuscany background of the email batch programs that, that I learned on, but it is, um, that's what we'll see in, and tokens and everything as we go through we see okay here's um here's a specific uh specific screenshot from marketo but that doesn't really tell sales anything and i think sometimes uh that looks like a little linear a um which is one of the rosetta stone languages uh that we don't really know what it means <laughs> so i don't really know what the binary or linear a means either but um Essentially, what we want to do is take all this information that we have here and boil it into um, uh, basically an aesthetic and digestible um, view. And so what we get when we do that is Marketo Sales Insight. So these are some screenshots from uh, within the specific, uh, and thank you, Lillian Smith. Uh, if anyone knows Lillian, she came from Visible. She's wonderful. She works here at Adobe as well. Um, but as you go through there, you can see these different insights and these interesting moments that um, that people interact with, um, the scores that people get. So as, as we see in the top there, we see that daily web visits are giving Lillian a score of one extra point every day. That's a, a batch campaign. Um, and there are essentially just insights there where when someone from sales asks for access to Marketo to see what people are engaging with, um, we're not going to give them access. So this is this is the best they're going to get. And it's basically going to show them everything they need to know and nothing that they don't need to know. Um, another great, uh, great portion of this is uh, is our web activity here. So where people are coming from, where they're hitting on the website, um, essentially, like where is my account or lead or contact or people on this opportunity? Where are they engaging with my website or with my different marketing activities? Uh, so let's hop into some uh, some best use cases. Uh, kind of go through, in my experience, the different things that you can that you can do with this, um, and uh, kind of see some some examples here. So what Marketo Sales Insight essentially does, it's not really much of an operational tool, although it does have those um, those capabilities, but it helps your sales team answer these questions. Um, essentially, like who's engaging with what. Um, who's engaging specifically, um, how, how are people best interacting with our marketing activities? And it really bolsters your credibility as a marketing team to know um, that the sales board can see everything that like their account is interacting with. Um, so uh, th there are some other features we'll go through as well, but this is far and away um, just top level, what we see here is um, all the the engagement scores, the different um, the different interesting moments that people get, and uh, the last interesting moment uh, typically is what people like to look at. So, as we see in the screenshot on the bottom there, um, one of the really powerful tools here is the Marketo Best Bets. And so, it, when you click on the Marketo tab, uh, you're in Salesforce. If you're an SDR and AE, what I typically when let's say an SDR starting out, they haven't used Marketo Sales Insight before. If they have, great. If they haven't, no worries. I did this when I was at uh, Marketo, when I was kind of instructing how people should use Marketo to sell Marketo. So that's why our instance was called Meta. It's a very like, very meta stuff there. Um, and, and at PowerSchool and in previous companies as well, I talked to the SDRs and I get, go, okay, well, let's go look at your best bets. So these are people that have in engaged with your site that you don't have to make an MQL. You don't have to make them a specific status and assign them um, within like a routing tool. If they're assigned to this person already, let's say they're outbounding them, um, but they're not getting anything with outbound, maybe it's a good idea to go into your best bets, look at the leads that have the highest engagement score. And if you see on the bottom right here, I don't know if you can see my, uh, I don't think you can see my cursor, but there are stars and flames. So that is something that that those logos have been updated, uh, but I remember the the old logos from like 2014 um, kind of look like clip art from uh, from Microsoft Paint. But um, 
So those pertain to the urgency. So how recently someone engaged and the person score that you have mapped in the in your admin section in Marketo. So the high the more stars, the higher the person score is and the engagement that they've taken. And the more flames is the the more urgency that you should take with these leads. Uh, so what I would instruct people to do is basically click through these leads, add them to um, send them an email. You can send them an e email from Marketo that you can publish in the Sales Insights. So you, you can, it's basically, uh, if you have outreach, you can drop them into an outreach flow or Groove or Sales Loft or whatever you use. Um, and then at the end of the day, you come back to your best bets. All these people will still be here and you can go back and check in on different engagements that people have had. So that's one of my favorite use cases. It really gets SDRs engaged with, um, all the different content that you can put out as a marketing team. And it really is able to like give you the credibility as a marketing team to say that we're using tools and the things that we're doing uh, are working. Uh, my next favorite, favorite uh, use case here is we have um, alerts. So see, I'll go back one slide here. On the right side, right where it says hide uh, in that screenshot, oh, this thing's sensitive. There we go. On the right of where it says type is lead, there's a little box there and it looks grayed out. If you click on that box, what you can do is set up automatic alerts and not have to set this up in your Marketo instance and flows and uh, build new emails and everything. But you can basically say, so let's say I, I want to get information about uh, Belinder, which is my contact that's assigned to me. I can subscribe to all interesting moments from Belinder I can subscribe to all interesting moments from an account or the type, which would be web, email, or milestone, or the description. So one of my favorite things here, we'll look into tokenizing and how you can basically scale one trigger to say they visited all these different websites. But one thing that's really important is if you have one description that says, like, requested a demo, you can subscribe to all people that are assigned to you that request a demo. Um, and so you don't have to set that up in Marketo. That helps answer the question like, who on my account requested a demo? Well, as soon as they do, they'll get an alert. Uh, so it's a really good way to, you can go in and subscribe someone else to this, or you can create a PDF and, and use documentation to show them how to do it as well. Uh, so definitely one of my favorite features here. Uh, there's, there's really no downside to it because then you can just go in and turn them off as well. Now, the last, uh, what I was talking about with the operational uh, smart campaigns, essentially, when you have, if you've used uh, requested campaigns before, uh, when you pull that trigger in, you'll see the source is, and it'll say uh, Marketo workflow or Marketo flow step, essentially, or web service API or sales insight. And so when you go to sales insight, what you'll see on the sales insight side is that you can take a specific lead or contact and request a Marketo trigger campaign. This works really well if a customer says, hey, listen, or sorry, um, apologies, if a CSM says, hey, listen, I don't want you to reach out to this company, spend a lot of time closing Meta or wh whatever account that they have is. I don't want you to put them in nurture flows, anything like that. So you just set something up on the, on the Marketo side that says, okay, if we request it from Sales Insight, we can remove them from the nurture flow. Uh, so you can also create a PDF, send it to them. Say, if you want, you don't want someone to get the nurture flow, this is what you do. You go in, request a Marketo campaign, select the right one. And then uh, it says add to Marketo campaign. That's essentially um, kicking off a flow for that to occur. You can also send webinar invites from here. You can, um, if someone's upset that their leads didn't get invited to a webinar or email opt-in, opt-out, score increases, uh, whatever your heart desires, but as long as it's a, a good idea, that's what I would uh, what I would suggest. Okay, so hopping into the actual uh, trigger tokens, I will, um, I'll send this deck out. So we have the, the link in the Marketo trigger tokens at the top there. But essentially when the flow, we'll take a look at some of the, um, the triggers that we can have there. Let's say your trigger says that someone visited a web page. So if someone visits a web page, you can tokenize the web page they visited, the refer that they came from, the, um, the trigger that's picking it up, or um, the pretty much anything uh, related to that constraint of visiting a web, web page. Same with filling out a form. So it could be the form name. It could be the web page that they filled it out on. It could be um, a lot of different tokens that we see here. 
the uh, documentation uh, on, on Adobe's website from that link is uh, very helpful for that. Kind of get a little creative in there. Um, you don't really need to throw date tokens in there because there's a last interesting moment date. It's like a set of fields that kind of come with, um, with the last interesting moment package. Uh, one thing that's not on here though is program status change. So, uh, uh, and we'll, we'll go through this in I think two slides, we look at program status changes, but um, you can basically tokenize the program name, um, the program type, the, the channel, things like that into this specific, um, these specific triggers. So here's our real life example. Um, this is screenshots I took when I was at Aspire in my previous company, Influencer Marketing. Um, and so the trigger says that if a web page contains plans, pricing, platform, everything down there to toolkits, let's say it's definitive guides for you or events or whatever it may be, webinars, then if someone visits that web page, we will add a web interesting moment where they visited the web page with that trigger token in there. And so our end result is at the bottom there that we see people who visited blog, guides, events, and um, blog. So blog twice. Um, and we throw those uh, we throw those web pages in there, and you don't have to basically set up a new one for for each different web page if someone hits, which is great. Uh, we love scale scalability. One um, word of the wise on this is in the schedule tab in that top right. You don't want to make sure that you don't have this running every single time um, that that this occurs. So. Typically, I like to limit people from going through this um, more than once an hour or once a day. Uh, basically, if they engage on the website, that's great. And if you um, remember back to, we, we actually also have our web activity in the bottom right there. So if they go to different web pages, we can see that in web activity, but it's more important that we show it in the interesting moment, which is kind of like the, the, the prime view uh, within that iframe in Marketo. Okay, and then the uh, the next part, uh, what I was talking about was uh, program status changes. So when a program status does change, you'll be able to uh, say if their new status is registered, then we'll say, okay, they registered for a webinar um, under trigger.name, which is the program name, because the program is the thing that triggered uh, the smart campaign to run. In the middle there, there's an example of the different uh, triggers that I set up at a previous company. You, you don't want to go overboard with Marketo Sales Insight, and I'll, I'll tell you a bit why um, in, in a minute here, but one of the things is, is being um, succinct and precise and uh, clear about the activities that people take. Um, and uh, again, we'll go through like, we, we want to see metrics that matter. We don't want to give everyone all the information at once. And so moving into words of the wise, essentially, uh, words to the wise, sorry. Uh, sales insight licenses. I'm again not here to sell you sales insight. Uh, totally respect the the mug um, the mug rules on that. And uh, but just to give you an idea, they're purchased in blocks of five licenses. So previously at a company, um, I had ten SDRs and ten AEs and five CSMs, and then we had about five marketing people. So if my math is correct. I purchased 30 licenses. Um, sometimes it goes over, sometimes it kind of comes under and you can work with your CSM to see what amount of licenses are best um, are best there. And then uh, the licenses are used up based on the profile in your CRM. And so it's really important to utilize, uh, work with rep ops or sales ops, or if you're the, the Salesforce admin, then it's on you as well to say, um, that SDRs have a specific profile, AEs have a specific profile, which is good practice anyway, to be able to basically show different, uh, different layouts based on the profile of someone that's looking. The layout of an SDR versus the layout of a VP of sales uh, should be vastly different. The information they're looking for on any object in Salesforce or Microsoft Dynamics uh, is, uh, is, is vastly different itself. So close relationship with SOPS or RevOps, um, once, you, once you hide the availability of Marketo Sales Insight on, uh, on a specific profile, you will not be utilizing licenses for those uh, specific, specific people. Um, Brooke, do you wanna do questions now or wait till the... Um, we can do them now. Jeff's question was, how yeah. are the licenses in use counted by Marketo? 
Uh, yes. So the licenses in use are based on the sales, the amount of Salesforce users that have access to Marketo Sales Insight uh, within your CRM. So that's why the profiles are really important because if you have your support people, let whoever at the company, if everyone's on the exact same profile, then everyone has access to Sales Insight. So anyone with a Salesforce login, like as they look at a lead or contact, will have a use of a license. And so it'll show in the past 30 days in your uh, Marketo admin section, it says this many licenses used in the past 30 days, and it'll show how many that you have available. Um, so it's something that, uh, you know, I, I can't really say this, but I've heard from other people that uh, CSMs might look at it closely, CSMs might not look at it closely. But if you work with them, they will give you some leeway to say like, yes, we're working on that with sales ops, but not always, um, you know, I can't guarantee that essentially. <laughs> yeah, I've had this fight people on instances, especially that haven't had it before and didn't have user profiles who go in and all of a sudden it's like, holy cow, we have 150 sales insights seats being used, but we only paid for 40 what's happening um, because they didn't understand how that relationship worked. So yeah, definitely if you feel like you're in that kind of a situation, um, if you're aware of it, work with your sales ops team. Um, if your CSM brings it up, it's it's something where you can be like, hey, yep, we know we're actively working on it. By the time this refreshes for 30 days, we expect to be back within compliance. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it won't, if you go over, it won't uh, automatically shut you down. The CSM would have to go act on that. And I uh, promise you, they'll talk to you before they do that automatically. Um, so they will give you grace on that. Uh, one other piece here uh, that we have here is that Th so this is this is like the new view of the home. If you go into interesting moments um, in this screenshot, then you'll see the things that we've custom put in there from Marketo. Uh, and then web activity automatically comes in from your website. Score comes in from the person score changing. As we see here, it says plus 155. Everyone has different scoring models. Um, and I'm sorry, uh, everything has different scoring models. The default is that it just goes by the person score default. Um, but if you use a custom behavior score, demographic score, combined score, whatever it is, you can uh, change that in your Marketo admin section. So that the score that we see here is the one that, that comes from Marketo that you're in use that maybe drives your MQLs. Uh, second word of the wise here, uh, the I feel like I said word to the wise so much. It's like, it sounds weird in my head now. Um, Marketo Sales Insight is, uh, does have a level of permanence to it. So if you make a typo, uh, if you accidentally register a thousand people for, um, for a webinar and they all get an interesting moment, it's something that you can't delete from Marketo Sales Insight. So even as a Salesforce admin, as a Marketo admin, it doesn't matter. It's uh, it's there and it's there for, I believe, 25 months. So as we looked at like the website activity, not the interesting moments, but all the websites people hit and the scoring activity that clears after 90 days, the interesting moments stay for uh, essentially a full two years. And so if a mistake's made there, then it's going to be there for a while. So it's really important to test. Um, one of my favorite ways to test essentially is to activate the trigger that you want to activate and add a an email address is filter to your smart list. Um, and so mine would be uh, email address is lead them in Adobe. Uh, don't put lead them in Adobe because you won't get anything, put your email and uh, and then go start clicking around on the website or take your lead record and add it as registered to a webinar. Uh, whatever the, the trigger is calling for, test it on that. Go look in Salesforce, look at everything that you that you want to see there, uh, make sure it's all there. Uh, and then you can test the, uh, the subscription feature as well to uh, subscribe to that specific interesting moment type. Um, okay, that's mostly it. I've definitely made mistakes before on typos. Uh, it happens, you know, it, people essentially get the gist of it, but there's a lot of people like to fix typos. So if you want to avoid those people, then don't make them. Um, uh, and unintended program membership and um, yeah, so data retention, good thing to keep an eye on. 
Okay, last word to the wise, and we'll kind of open it up to different uh, different questions there, is, and this is this is more like a soapbox for me after being in uh, different roles working with uh, VP of finance or CRO or uh, marketing practitioners, wh whoever it may be. Um, there is a specific amount of data that each person needs to know, and there's specific data that each person doesn't need to know. Uh, my my grace analogy on this is like, do you tell all your coworkers everything you did all weekend? Um, whatever debauchery or non debauchery you may have gotten into, uh, you know those that that information you might tell to your friends, but uh, maybe you don't tell tell to your coworkers. So it's important to um, to really nail down that metrics that matter. Um, a great example of metrics that don't matter to me, at least when I'm setting up Marketo Sales Insight, is uh, unsubscribes email opens. Uh, there's a lot of bot opens that are still occurring in Marketo instances. Uh, the email bot activity, it largely is taken care of um, with that with the email bot filter. Uh, but there's still things that come through. And a lot of times people open every single email, uh, they don't click on anything, they don't engage with anything, but they open an email. Um, so that will just flood your interesting moments and take away from the importance of the other interesting moments. Unsubscribes, people unsubscribe, it, it, you know, it's something to watch out for on your nurture programs, on your batch emails. Um, that is your information. I would not share that with sales because I think that it's something, especially with recency bias, um, it, it can happen with sales where they're, let's say they go to a, an event and they say that event was great. It's like, okay, what was great about it? Did we close a lot of a, a lot of revenue or open a lot of pipeline. They're like, the food was really good and the conversation was good. It's like, okay, well, we need some metrics behind that or I'm getting a bunch of bad leads. Like, well, are you or was the last lead you got that? So if they see unsubscribes, they might be more inclined to say that uh, marketing is sending bad content or something like that. Um, one thing that they can do as well in uh, in the email tab, that's the only like screenshot that I don't have in this presentation, but um, in the email tab that we see there, you can see all the emails that people have been sent from Marketo. And so you don't need a Marketo login. Again, this is within the iframe in your CRM. Uh, you can click on that email and it will bring up a Marketo page with your preview as if, let's say you're in Marketo, you click on the, the email asset, you hit preview. And it shows you, okay, here's the subject line. This is what it came from. This is who it came from. Sorry, these are all the links in it. This is what the email looks like. You can do that within Salesforce and not have to have a Marketo login or send samples of emails or anything like that. And it'll tell you if they opened it or clicked it uh, multiple times as well. So that's great if sales is like, hey, what are you sending my account? Like really easy way to, to go look at that. Uh, I believe that that data also clears after 90 days. Um, and it's an interesting moment specifically that stay for a while. Um, the, the last, the last part of this, I guess, two last parts of this, uh, and the red box in the bottom, right? There is upcoming email cam, uh, upcoming campaigns, essentially that people are, um, or that Marketo has scheduled. So it will pull your upcoming campaigns and put them in there. This can cause confusion. You can remove this within, uh, I know you can do it within the Salesforce. I'm not sure if you can do it within. Microsoft Dynamics, but you can remove this specifically. Uh, and a one, one main thing is because it's not just this lead that we're looking at that can qualify uh, for these campaigns. It, it's pretty much any campaigns that are occurring within your Marketo instance. So this, let's say this specific contact, um, let's, let's call this person John, they uh, probably didn't register for or attend all of these different webinars on December 19th, 26th, and January 2nd. But those are campaigns that are like set to run because the webinars are set to run within Marketo. And so it's it's not specific to the lead that you're looking at. Uh, so again, when you're av avoiding unnecessary data, they they don't need to know that you're sending attend like thank you for attending emails. Uh, that's on you, right? So um, it's a good thing to remove that last part. Work with your SDRs and AEs. Uh, if you get something on paper ever, and you you can basically say like, yes, we agree. Uh, here's an SLA document. Here's a document that we both have agreed to that says these are the interesting moments that we're going to pass over. So they don't ask for all the extra unnecessary like, well, what if they clicked in an email after they visited a booth, uh, this, this, and this, kind of how like sports data is, is presented now. Um, so... 
it's important to work with them, get their sign off, um, uh, their stakeholders, uh, they're, you know, we're here to help them succeed so that they can help the business succeed as well, uh, among other reasons that we're here. Uh, so yes, work with SDRs and AEs, uh, make sure you, you kind of have that handshake there. Um, a lot of contextual stuff with with sales insight i think it's a great tool it's every every time i've been in a company i've used it um just because it's it's so valuable uh and it it really removes the uh the manual setup on a lot of the like adding fields and then adding different you know oh they engage with this on this uh to a field specifically it kind of gives you like a nice little frame uh i guess more of like a like an eye hole to see like okay here, here's what's going on with this account uh within within the system so um i appreciate the time today i'm happy to answer questions again reach out to me if you have any questions that don't come up now but i'm happy to open uh open the floor up it's just a white we'll, we'll get back to the purple for people that was awesome thank you james um one question that I have for you, I know Marketo has started to get rid of the Marketo University, um, which was the educational and training area. There had been some great content in there on setting up sales insights. Now that that is gone, what are some areas that you recommend people go to for resources for setting up or optimizing sales insights or even training their SDR and AE teams who may be really underutilizing this functionality? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would say, and I'll, I'll get back to you on the university because I'm sure that there are, uh, I think there's like experience league documentation that they're moving everything to, um, but I'll get back to you on that. I always go to, my first thing I go to is, uh, is the community. And see other issues that people may have had. Uh, contextual kind of anecdotal information is, is always good to ingest when you're trying to figure out like where are the guidelines around how we should present this data. Uh, second thing, I always like Googling. Sometimes you'll you'll get into Sanford Whiteman's um, uh, documentation and uh, that guy's a genius. So um, it's, it's always good stumbling across that. And then third, uh, I mean, my plug is talk to your CSM. See if you can get someone like me on the call and um, kind of take a, take a brief look, um, you know, sometimes in smaller projects, uh, if you're not setting up a whole new life cycle, you don't need to go with, uh, with consultants. If you're working with a consultant that already knows, and you have some hours that you want to use, you can, you can utilize that as well. Um, but we will have, uh, probably a decent amount of documentation, uh, that, that I can dig up and make sure that we're keeping it, even if the university is going away. Questions from the group, or does anybody have any really interesting use cases or wins that you've had within your teams? Just wondering if maybe James could highlight some of the advanced filtering that's possible in Salesforce. I know I've personally uh, created certain lists for team members in the past, and that I, I feel is a capability that is uh, seldom used and little known. Yeah, absolutely. Are you talking about like the the my leads best bets view? Yeah. So if you go into the Marketo, you know the the best bets area uh, mm -hmm. for yourself, yeah, or even you can impersonate team members and create lists for them. So you know recent activity or you know meets X Y Z criteria. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I think that the like walking them through. I I. All, I mean, I think I've been really lucky to to work with SDRs, especially at, um, at Marketo, that know how to use Salesforce really well. And then I've worked at other companies where they don't know how to use Salesforce very well. And it's there's a, a varying level of, of competency within building filters and understanding filters. Um, so I think that, yes, having having like a set amount of um, of lists where it's like, okay, here's, if we're selling into an industrials, we want to look at all of our MQLs that come in from an industrials or people from industrials. If you have a specific, um, you know, group flow or outreach sequence that pertains to a specific industry. Yes. Doing that industry, uh, industry filtering, and then looking at your recently engaged leads, you can sort it by the last interesting moment date. So the last activity that someone had there, um, advanced filtering, I mean, 
get as, as advanced as you want on that. Um, but yes, mostly working with SDR managers to say here, like this group of SDRs, we can train them. We can, we can make sure that they're able to see this data that they need to see. This is what they're assigned to. And then kind of moving that, um, group by group. Does that help? Yeah. And I, I think, you know, it's, it's powerful when you're looking at, um, you know, if you have a diverse team or or a subset of SDRs, like you said, that are focused, uh, maybe industry specific or or what have you, um, you know, assignments don't always necessarily go the way you want in Salesforce. Hopefully they do. But I know when you are starting out or have a, a more fledgling team that sometimes you're still sorting things out. So creating some of these filtered lists, creating some of the uh, the views that are capable with that additional functionality can be beneficial. Yeah, absolutely. I, I appreciate the input on that. Um, the one thing that popped in my head that was uh, that was kind of important at my previous company, we um, we essentially had uh, P ones and P twos for MQLs. So P ones are hand raisers, demo requests, contact us requests. P twos are any other scoring activity, so webinar content, something like that. Um, we won't get into like is webinar content. That's like a historically long conversation. <laughs> um, but essentially, uh, we had a, a rules of engagement because if we're, uh, it takes us time to nurture leads. It takes us time to like get a lead to the point where we say that they're sales ready and they're they're ready to be put into an outreach sequence. And just because they came in through like paid social and downloaded a specific piece of content or like engaged with the blog or signed up for the blog list, that doesn't mean that they're ready to have a conversation about buying the product yet. So we had, uh, as you said, in, in that filtering that if someone hadn't, the rules of engagement that everyone signed off on was if someone hadn't engaged with uh, marketing's content in more than two weeks, that they were okay to be outbounded to. And so a really good example of the, uh, we had inbound and outbound SDRs. So the outbound SDRs were able to go poach those leads because we hadn't had engagement from them, even though we were trying to continuously make sure that they were staying engaged in marketing. So we still, with multi-touch attribution, are able to say that they came in through this avenue. Uh, we, uh, we nurtured them. That Let's say they engaged with this nurture program based on UTM. So now we have an email get engagement. But really, like the opportunity was open by an SDR going through outbound. If you're looking at kind of a binary sales and marketing opportunity last touch, that'll say it's SDR. But if you're looking at multi-touch attribution, you're getting much more attribution on the mar marketing side. So just one example of like a, a bit more advanced um, filtering on there to make sure that people don't see things that they shouldn't essentially. Thank you, James. Yeah. Uh, from Brian, did you talk much about the ability for reps to trigger a Marketo email or campaign via MSI? Yeah. Um, so I I think one one really uh, really good use case that we discussed briefly was the um, sending a webinar invite essentially. So if someone's like, I want to make sure this person's invited to the webinar, they can send them the link to the landing page if they'd like, or they can go through their add to Marketo campaign and then find the requested send webinar invite. Um, and, uh, oh, yes, also uh, the plugins from Outlook and Google. Yes, uh, we'll go through that in a sec. The, um, so yes, sending webinar invites is great. Adding them to a nurture, let's say you have a new new contact and um, that's, a, that's a customer. You wanna make sure that they get uh, the onboarding nurture or advocacy nurture. I'm sure you've seen the Marketo emails that come from there as well. Um, you can, we, we had setups like that in the past where they say, oh, this is a new person. I didn't have them on the account when the account closed. So your batch, um, add to nurture and Marketo didn't pick them up. Here's a new contact on, on the customer account. Let's make sure they're added to the nurture, um, or remove them from the nurture as well. Like I think depending on your level of Marketo experience, uh, you are maybe a little bit more advanced or maybe you need that, uh, that content. So um, just like customizing things there. Uh, Brian, did that kind of cover? Yeah, cool. Um, James, that's a great use case that you mentioned because that's we're working on that with our team right now where 
when we're onboarding a new account, there's multiple roles within the account that are different contact, basically contact roles. And so in many cases, we may not know who those people are simply based on job title. And so this is something that we're putting in place for our, our CSMs. As they get that account, they start to make that relationship. It's like, hey, who's the best marketing contact within your organization? Who's going to be your system admin contact within your organization? And then they can either you know, set those values, but the best thing that they can do is we're using those Marketo smart campaigns where it can then not only update who that role is, but put them in appropriate nurtures for their roles. Um to kick off kind of that customer onboarding series. But a lot of that stuff isn't things that we're going to necessarily know right off the bat. And so we've, we've, we're using that smart campaign yeah. trigger for that. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, you know, tails old as time getting the right contacts on the opportunity, right? Uh, you're not always going to have the primary contact on the opportunity. And that's just like probably a tree you don't want to bark up all the time um, or a hill you want to die on. But uh yeah, for sure. That's that's always helpful. And um, and I, I noticed that when when we did that for launch, when I was at Marketo, we launched uh, like an onboarding and advocacy nurture. So basically taking people who are who have low adoption scores, trying to bump them up or a high adoption scores and trying to get them to engage with the community and things like that. Um, my the slacks I would get day after day of like, please add this person, please add this person. Um, those those pretty much diminished to zero because I was able to just send people the PDF link every time they would ask it like, here you go. Here's how you do it. This is what you search for. This is what you look for request campaign. It's done. Um, and then they can, they can see that happen, see people open and click those emails, uh, within the email tab in in, uh, in sales insight. Um, Jeff, I would love to, uh, I, I haven't used those specific outlook, um, those specific Outlook uh, plugins. All I do know is that you can't do it if you're on a Mac unless something's changed. So that's still that's still true. So if your sales reps have PCs, you're able to send specific Marketo emails that you can write and house in a folder in Marketo from the Outlook browser. Um, that takes a little bit more setup. It's not as automatic, um, but I would love contextual information from anyone on that because I haven't had to jump in that in probably six years. Yeah, it's been a while for me as well. But one thing I can lend to the conversation on this topic is that one of the benefits that I found when I implemented this with my teams was that they have the ability through Outlook now, uh, there's uh, an additional button that is added as well as a checkbox to actually track the email or not when they send it. So this, this applies blanketly across the board. So if it's just a simple uh, note that they're sending to, you know, broach a topic and say, hey, you know, we haven't talked in a while, how are you doing? That could feasibly be logged in as a sales outreach email uh, by utilizing the tool in Outlook on a PC, of course. Um, similarly, there was the Google, uh, the Gmail tool and plugin for the web browser. So that's also an option, which, uh, you know, look and feel is slightly different. But the benefit of adding it to certain email outreach is that then the responses and all of that thread get tracked in the email portion within MSI. So you have that contextual conversation and where that's playing in with all of the other marketing materials that you might have going out from the broader team. Yeah, I absolutely. Used the Gmail implementation before, and I can say, couple it it's it sounds very shiny and and jeff you're absolutely right all those things are accurate um but i would say tread with caution depending on the maturity and responsibility and detail orientedness of your sales team so with that, yes. right um uh, as with any Marketo email, it is one-to-one. -one. You cannot send an email to a group of people and have Marketo track the group of people in that aspect. It's gotta be an email sent to one person and then so on and so forth. <clears throat> also, that email address that you're sending to 
has to be in Marketo or zaniness ensues. And even sometimes when that email address is inside of Marketo, zaniness and dupes or weird orphaned no email things pop up that's pretty funky. So there's got to be real tight rails around what is enabled there and tracked and so on and so forth. And I think that can be a little bit tricky. Um, but should you have, you know, a small tight staff of unicorn salespeople that are very marketing enabled, and I know that probably doesn't exist, but let's just say it does. I think this is a wonderful addition. Otherwise, I would give it deep thought and discussion prior to implementation. Yeah, echoing that for sure. Yeah. Um, what and uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, if you if you do log and track, uh, send and track those emails, it will log as a as a sales activity when someone responds to those emails. One use case uh, that we had previously was uh, using outbound um, programs. So being able to show that a program, if you use primary campaign source on the opportunity, the last engaged program is the thing that drove that, let's say the demo to be booked or the opportunity to be created. You can do so by setting up a trigger on the Marketo side to add them to that outbound default program in Marketo is engaged if they respond or reply to yeah. the email um, that's sent out there. So that's always nice. It's, some, it's sometimes it's really tough where they're like, oh, I sent an email from Outlook, like can't you track it? It's like marketing automation and you go, okay. <laughs> um, so it's, it's, a, it's a good way, a good little like workaround to, to measure engagement on outbound activities for sure. Yeah. I like to ask that person if their Fitbit tracks my walk from the train to the office that morning and see what they say. And oh, yeah. that's good. Yeah. What if they say yes? Like, then, then you're in trouble. With different business <laughs> and you need yeah. to. Echoing the huge thank you to you that we're seeing coming in, uh, you know, from the audience. Um, been a delight to have you uh, join us today and talk through this. I know it's an area that uh, it's been around for a while, but it has sort of seen different layers of uh, evolution and interest, and then kind of like people. Some people don't even know it exists, or they haven't been introduced to it. Um, I mean, this is wonderful. We really appreciate you joining us. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Through this, and um, I'm sure everyone here uh, is uh, looking forward to having the recording because there are definitely some things um, that uh, are worth a, a double take just to make sure that we're we're following through on on some of that advice. So thank you again. Yeah. And, uh, hope I, you've I wish I wish I could have catered with Lou Malnati's or Baba Reba, but uh, oh, alas. Wait. Right, we, would have, we would have triple <laughs> administration. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, yeah. There's, an, there's an idea. There is, well, James, there is. we are also thrilled to know that you are back in-house with Marketo in a consultancy role. So very excited for uh, the folks on this call and Marketo users everywhere to have the opportunity to take advantage of your knowledge and experience. Um, oh, so grateful you. for you to continue to share that with the community. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm I'm happy to be here. Please connect with me on LinkedIn. Reach out if you have any questions. Um, my my only goal in my job is to help Marketo customers succeed. So um, that's how I know I'm doing well. So yeah, reach out. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful holiday season, and we'll see you in 2023. Bye.